What is up? Welcome back. 2024-25 NBA season previews. Vendetta Sports Media. My name is Matt. This is Germani. Today we're going to be doing the Los Angeles Clippers, um, who recently opened a new uh, arena in Los Angeles, uh, in, in Inglewood. Built a lot of bathrooms, Steve Ballmer did, um, so the fans could definitely see their team without Paul George and Kawhi Leonard for the start of the season. Um, Germani, man, what's going on? Ah, nothing much. You you hit me with a curveball. I thought we were talking about a different team, but you know what? We got the Clippers, and yeah, the Clippers. It, it doesn't look good, but you know what? I'm feeling good, so I'm. I just ordered myself some food, so I'm going to be pretty happy for a while. <laughs> but but that's not. You want to start this over? <laughs> no, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're we're keeping it. Clippers. I I don't, I don't know how I feel about the Clippers, but I'm feeling good, Matt. I hope you're doing all right. Let, let's let's keep. This has gotten going. off to a chaotic start. Um, it's okay. I did say Clippers like five times before we started recording. <laughs> I was pulling, I was pulling up tabs like, oh no, but I'm here. We are. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, this is this is probably not the worst start that we've had to one of these <laughs> Vendetta Sports Media NBA season previews. Please go check the other ones out um, on the YouTube channel. Uh, this is almost as chaotic as the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, they won 51 games last year. They were they had the seventh best adjusted net rating in the entire league, fifth best adjusted offensive rating, 17th best um, defense. Uh, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George stayed healthy, um, but Kawhi did miss the, the latter part of the season. 12 of his team's final 14 games with a knee injury. Um, Paul George, he's now in Philadelphia. He signed a four year max with the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, just some other like notable departures. Uh, Mason Plumley's now out of there. Uh, Russell Westbrook, uh, they traded him to Utah the second time he's been traded to Utah and then waived subsequently. Um, he's now in Denver. Uh, what do you think of like their what do you think about them last season? What do you think about them heading into this new season? I mean, another one, another uh, something else that I want to uh, just touch on really quick is they did hire Jeff N. Gundy. Um, who I believe was a consultant with the Boston Celtics last year, his first year out of the booth at ESPN. He was there for, I don't know, 15, 20 some odd years or whatever. Um, he then, you know, got fired. He, you know, became a consultant with the Boston Celtics with uh, second year, then second year head coach Joe Missoula. They win a title. He's now the lead assistant under Tyron Liu, who's one of the best young coaches in the entire league. Uh, I mean, not, not young coaches, but one of the best coaches in the entire league. Um, he's running their defense. Um, but well, I guess, what do you think about, you know, the Clippers last season, obviously another disappointing finish. They break up the Kawhi Leonard and Paul George duo that they brought in to hopefully win a title. They only made one Western conference finals, you know, over their, their, their five years together. What do you think about them? what do you think about them last year? And then what do you like kind of where you kind of see it heading into this new season? The Clippers were a fun basketball team to watch when they were healthy. And whether or not I was in the playoffs, like that playoff series against the Mavericks, that was fun. Like I remember watching like some of the ends of those games and seeing like Paul George, like lighting it up. Like I remember, uh, I know I alluded to this play in particular, I think a couple of previews ago, but like there was times that you think, oh man, this team's legit. And they had names. They had guys like Norman Powell, like you said, Russell Westbrook after a tumultuous tenure with the Lakers. You had, um, you brought in like Bones Highland, um, I believe last season through a trade with Denver, um, who I think I think he's going to be poised out himself a, a really good season this year. But, um, but yeah, like they had names like like you said, Mason Plumlee and a lot of those guys outside of Kawhi and PG. Um, like that that Clippers team that Clippers team was supposed to be so much better than what like they ended up having. But also, it's kind of like now like you had no choice. Like Kawhi said, I wanted to come into the Clippers, but I wanted to play with Paul George. And at the time, you had the two two of the best two way wings playing together, and you would think that was going to, you know, breed at least one championship. But then, obviously, you know, three one leads being blown, basketballs hitting the side of the backboard, and whatnot. It's like um, injuries, the, the like the absolute dumpster fire that these rosters were sometimes with the injuries, like, um, and it was like again, like you would have Kawhi, like I, the, I don't think those guys. I think their best shot to get to where they wanted to go was the 21 season when they made the Western Conference Finals and Kawhi got injured like halfway through that playoff run. And 
it's like now it's like Kawhi is not necessarily by himself. Like they still have a good roster around him. But the thing is, is that the main man isn't there, at least to start the season. Like um, he wanted to play in the Olympics, Kawhi. And then they said, oh, like no, he had to back out. I don't know if he got injured or it was just, oh, they have to prioritize his health. But regardless of the fact, it just seems like ever since that Toronto year or ever since maybe even the first year in um, L.A., like he hasn't been healthy. And honestly, I actually I should probably pull up his his year by year like availability. Let me find Kawhi. Kawhi, where are you, Kawhi? And also they brought in James Harden, which I think like at times Harden kind of I wouldn't say Harden's washed, but obviously he's not the you know the same person or the like MVP Harden, even though honestly he might have an MVP impersonation of himself for the first few uh first few weeks of the season with Kawhi being out. But um, speaking of Kawhi, yeah, 57, 57 games uh, two years ago, or not two years ago, 57 games in his first year there um, out of 72, and then he played 52 out of 72 the year after that. He gets hurt 52 games out of 82 and 23, and then 68 and 24. So that's, last year was his most that he's played since 2016-17 when he played 74. Yeah, so like he and it just seems like as the season moves on, like yeah, they were doing things like the rest and you know the load management and all that stuff that didn't work, and like we saw that it didn't work with PG getting hurt and him getting hurt, and then now like you see Paul George he goes to Philadelphia with another injury riddled star and Joel Embiid and both those guys aren't going to be playing back to backs, and then Paul George gets injured in the preseason. I would say something smart that they did was not re-signing Paul George on that four year max. Like they tried to work with him, but he he seemed like he was bent on getting the fourth year, and they're like, "We're not giving that to you." Like in the beginning, when both those guys first got there, I can understand prioritizing what they wanted. Those guys were still like, those guys were still in their twenties and like in the midst of their primes and all that stuff. And you traded a lot to get those guys. You let Paul George walk for nothing, and it seems like these guys are good. Like I feel like the Clippers situation is going to be far worse before it gets better because I think the next best thing you can do is either if the team isn't playing like quality basketball, then trades are going to come. And in all seriousness, now I don't think anybody would want to trade for Kawhi because just the the, yeah. the availability aspect of it all. But um, like the Clippers can still be a good team. I still I feel like they still can be a competitive team in the West. Um, if Kawhi is healthy, like that would be contingent on how far they can really go. But at the same time, like they still have guys who will come in and produce. And like I said, like some of the other guys out that they have on the roster, I think Harden will, you know, kind of like he kind of will lead the ship in Kawhi's absence, I guess. And um, depending on how he kind of, kind of has the opportunity to kind of play how he wants to play, like get back to the Houston Rockets, seem esque basketball, it seems like, but. I don't know. It seems it's really odd to see this team like this, but I mean, hey, like the experiment of bringing the two best two way players together just didn't work. So. Yeah, yeah, and like Clipper fans, I know are pretty irate at the fact that again, Kawhi, it was the knee inflammation he missed time with knee inflammation last year um, for precautionary reasons. I don't know. I think he had surgery, and I don't think he wasn't fully recovered. Um, he didn't play in the Olympics, and he's still like recovering from knee inflammation. He's going to be out indefinitely to start the season. It was reported last week. So the fact that he's already going to miss the start of the season with him, you just don't know whether that's going to, you know, how how much that's going to flare up, no pun intended, uh, over an 82-game season. And so that's, I guess, the biggest question mark that I have with them. Obviously, you know, the James Harden piece of it. Like, James Harden isn't going to be the guy that he was in Houston, but, like, he's now going to be the most – he's going to be the, the the conductor of the offense. Um, he's going to be the primary hub offensively, and so I'm interested to see how that goes as he's entering his age 35 season. Norman Powell, guy that you mentioned earlier, he's, he's going to be – he was traded there in 22 at the deadline from Portland, I believe. And he is now going to be entering his first full-time starting role with the Clippers since joining. Um, he's made some spot starts here and there, but this is going to be his first year where he's really like, you know, getting 30 to 35 minutes a night at least. Um, Zubac was a guy that I think they they recently signed to an extension who is one of the, one of the more underrated centers in the league, I think. Um, I mean, he's one of the better rebounders. He's one of the best offensive rebounders. Um, and he's not... I'm lower on his defensive. I'm lower on him defensively than the consensus, but like he's a fine shot blocker. 
Um, Terrence Mann was a guy who, uh, you know, we saw what he did against Utah a number of years ago uh, when he, you know, knocked down like 20,000 threes in the corner um, when Gobert was guarding him. And that's not, a, not only that's Go, Gobert's fault as much as the rest of the defense's fault for allowing so much dribble penetration and not, you know, covering up for that. Uh, Derek Jones Jr., a guy that they signed in the offseason, I think it was like three for 30. Chris Dunn is another guy that they they acquired in the offseason. Nick Batum, it was funny with him. He was with the Clippers for, you know, a couple of years. He plays three games last year. He gets traded to Philly in the James Harden deal, and now he's back in L.A. Uh, Bones Howland was the guy that you mentioned earlier. Amir Coffey. Kobe Brown is entering his second year in the league. He's a guy, He's a young guy that I like. The Kevin Porter Jr. thing is weird to me. Um, I know probably not the best human being on the planet, but at the same time, like, he just hasn't played much professional. I mean, he, I think he played overseas for a bit, but, like, I just I don't know about the fit completely. Um, Cam Christie, they drafted him in the second round. I wasn't super high on him as a prospect, but, like, he's definitely, like, a knockdown shooter. Mo Bamba was a guy that they added again in the offseason. Like, they have some pieces here. Kai Jones was a guy that they gave a two-way contract to who – is just so incredibly athletic uh, for for his size and his skill set. Like they have some they have some pieces here. Another one that I forgot to mention: PJ Tucker. He's just not going to play for them. Um, he was a guy who wanted to get traded last deadline. He's you know thirty nine years old or however old he is. He uh, is on a deal with. He's now in an, on an expiring contract for around eleven and a half million. I just don't know if a team is giving up really anything of substance for PJ Tucker at this stage. And again, that's 11 and a half million. That's not a significant amount, but that's also not an insignificant amount, especially since he's one probably wants to go to a team that's going to contend. And most of the teams that are contending are at or near the second apron. Um, and so that's, that's a complicated situation. And so I am very interested to see how this team plays without quiet later to start the season. I'm just not very high on this team. Um, like, I do think I don't want to say it's 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 better constructed because I don't think it is. Um, but I do think I am with you. I wouldn't have given Paul George that four or five year max, whatever it was. I just I wouldn't have done it. I also wouldn't have offered him two for 60, um, which is what he said that they that was their first offer to him. And that's just such a slap in the face for what a player that he is, even though. Yeah, he does have the injury concerns and whatnot, but two for 60 for him is, like, completely insane. Um, so, like, I wouldn't have done that, so I am with him there. I think the thing where they went wrong, though, was the Golden State rumor that they had a trade. I don't know if it was finalized or whatever the case was, but, like, there was a – they were in discussions, for lack of a better word, um, about Paul George potentially getting traded to Golden State. I think there was some – just from what, what I can remember uh, reading at the time, there was some like they didn't want to do business with Golden State because it's like, you know, like the rival or whatever the case is. But like they didn't want to do business with them, um, which I mean, to some extent I get. But at the same time, like you're still getting stuff back for Paul George instead of letting him walk like that's just would rather manage that asset just a little bit better, I guess. Um where do you think this team – I know it's a much tougher – it's it's a tougher Western Conference this year. But with this currently constructed roster, you know, assuming Kawhi misses, I'll say, 15 games for the sake of conversation, or at least the first 15 games to start the season, where do you kind of see this team ending up by season's end? Uh, that, is, that is a good question. And I feel like this may be – I'm trying – I want to see how they finished – the year before, uh, I don't know if you have that number pulled up, but I think they finished somewhere in the middle of the West last year, right? Or near the bottom, not near the bottom, but. Um, oh, you mean last year? Yeah, they last were year. They were fourth. Okay. So fourth. for me, I feel, I feel they can be in the middle of the pack or near the bottom, depending on how much time Kawhi misses. Um, I would say like. I could probably give him like that fifth or sixth spot, like in the best. I'm saying in the best if Kawhi misses at most 15 games, but I'm saying just the first 15 games to start the season. First 15 games to start the season. Let's let's say let's just be kind to them and be like they they go like 
they go like like seven and eight, like right around five hundred, which is like I feel like it's feasible because I feel like Harden won't like allow this team to be like, you know, oh they're in the gutter. But mm-hmm. I feel like if Kawhi is only playing like spotty like here and there and then like all the load management stuff, it's like I feel if they allow a lot of that stuff to kind of like rule their season because I feel like. I feel like the morale, regardless of how the offseason kind of panned out, is still going to be high with the new arena and all that stuff. But um, but I, w- I would say that I can't say – I would say at the worst they can be a playing team. But I would say at the best they'll probably be like – they can avoid the playing. I still think they're a good enough team to at least like make it to the dance. But I just can't see them be like – I would say at the very worst they can probably miss the playoffs, but I, I more in the middle see them like as a playing team at, at the very at the very worst have not missed the playoffs. But um, I feel like I'm kind of going in a bunch of different routes, but like I feel like this team is still like good enough with like the guys they have to still like be like a quality team. Just yes, not you're much. You're much higher on them than me. Yeah, just not. They're definitely not going to be top five in the West unless Kawhi plays. Yeah like 75 games and he averages like 27 like he did when he first got there he's gonna be out definitely he's gonna have to miss seven games and not miss a single game the rest of the season which is yeah happen. so like you're putting you're putting too much stock into someone that like he can be like healthy ish like 68 games is like all right but i would say at the same time it's like it's just how important he is to that team too he's now even more important now that pg isn't there anymore but like Again, it's like, how much stock do you hold? Because, again, it's like, for him, it's just the fact that it seems like he's always sitting out or he's always just not on the floor. And then when it gets to the point of the season where you need him, he's not there. Yeah. So I, I'd, I'd say, like, depending on how much of his absence impacts the team, then, like, you can, like, it seems like it's real odd to be, like, like where to place him. But again, I'm kind of curious because you say I'm higher on them, so I can imagine what you got to say about them going into the season. To me, whenever a preseason injury like this happens, this is just speculation. It's a slippery slope. Not to say Kawhi is going to miss the entire season or whatnot, but considering how stacked that conference is, like you just go up and down the roster, up and down the teams in the West. Like, I think Houston's going to be better. I think San Antonio, after winning 22 games, is going to be better. Memphis, who won 27 games last year in a year from hell, is going to be better. Um, Utah, I don't think is going to be better. Portland, I think, is going to be probably the worst of the entire Western Conference. I think Sacramento is probably around the same, but they also got DeMar DeRozan in the offseason. I think Golden State, despite losing Kawhi, is going to be better. Like they have guys who I think are there are there they have teams who I think are gonna be better. And so when I did my rankings preseason, I still I may sh- shift this around a little bit, but I had them thirteenth. I just and that sounds crazy because Ty Lu is gonna coach them to some wins. Yeah. yeah. Um it's it it does sound it crowd sounds crazy for me saying it out loud. That's how much like I'm I'm not super sure about that, but at the same time, like I just don't love how this team stacks up with the rest of the Western Conference yeah. without yeah. Paul George, without Kawhi for you know however many games. Him being out indefinitely is like is is troublesome for sure, and I don't know if they have a good enough team to compensate for it. Like again, I like some of the pieces. Like Derek Jones Jr. was awesome last year with Dallas. He was one of the biggest reasons why they were one of the best defenses in the league the latter half of the season. Um, and one of the better, one of the bigger reasons outside of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, why they, um, made the Western or made the NBA finals, not just the Western conference finals, but the NBA finals. Um, Chris Dunn's like a a solid point guard who I know has bounced around the league a little bit, but like, he's a guy that I like, especially from a defensive standpoint. Um, like at worst, I think this team's going to be a good defensive team. I do worry a little bit about the the offensive ceiling without those guys for a bit. Norman Powell is fine. James Harden obviously is James Harden even at this stage of his career. Again, he's not Houston James Harden, but he's James Harden. Um, Zubach is another guy that I like. 
But like again, like doing it on a night to night basis against some of these other teams in the West. I think it's gonna be an uphill climb and I just don't see them stacking together many wins. And like, what if you get to game, you know, forty five or fifty of a season and you know, someone's unhappy? What if Harden's unhappy? Because, you know, they're you know, twenty and twenty five or something like that. Like what what happens then? Um I don't know. But do you have any final thoughts before we close this out? We're running a little hot on time, but yeah. But the last thing I'll say, I'll say these these first like opening games, you'll probably see like James Harden either light the world on fire and like turn back the clock, or he's going to play like a shell of himself. I would say like he's probably like the like he's probably the one person to look out for to see how this team actually goes into like opening the season. Because I think right. a lot of eyes are on him to kind of carry the load a little bit, even though he's in his mid thirties now. Right. But I think he wants that role. Yeah. Like they were, again, they were one of the better offenses in the entire league last year. I just don't know how, with this new personnel, I don't know how that stacks up. I could be so completely wrong and I'm fine with it. Um, I'm probably some Clipper fan probably is calling me a clown to Mike <laughs> right now or something like that. Um, which I feel bad for them in the sense that like they just they've been so injury plagued for so long and it's just I their best players just keep going down whether it's you know the Kawhi Paul George or it's the Lob City or whatever the case was and it's just it sucks. Yeah. Um, my name is Matt. This is Germani. Please go check out all of our Vendetta Sports previews on the website. Um, in addition to Vendetta Media on our YouTube channel, you can see the banner at the bottom of your screen. Um, in addition to all of our other NBA content, MLB content with the World Series starting up this week, NHL, um, which started up this last or not last week, two weeks ago, um, college football is in full swing, NFL is in full swing, um, plus much, much more UFC, obviously, with James and all the great content that he does. My name is Matt. This is Germani. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.